G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're doing a bit of a part two to a previous video I did where we uh, did, gave all the teams that miss out on finals a you know postseason grade, rated them against their preseason expectations, went through some positive negatives, and yeah, gave them a letter grade and basically a little bit of an outlook as well for the following year. So today we are going to do part two to that, which is looking at all the teams that just took part in the most recent final series, which obviously ended with Collingwood winning the Premiership. Now I'm doing this in a slightly different setting you'll notice and you, you'll notice as well I look a little relaxed a little nonchalant the truth is I am in incredible pain I have had another costochondritis attack I don't know if anyone's watched my previous videos where the same thing happened to me in Greece look it's a pretty dramatic term for what it is although um, essentially what it is it's like a muscular skeletal injury it essentially feels like a, a terrible stitch and then kind of mimics the symptoms of a heart attack so I like my whole right arm went numb. It's all completely fine and, and there's no like danger to it. It's just a really painful injury that can sometimes be caused by the gym. And this is the second time it's happened to me in like four months. So uh, for this video and then probably at least one other on the channel before I go to London, I'm gonna be sitting back on this couch because I'm literally in agony in any other position that I sit in. Wow. So we're going to cut straight to the chase and start talking about the eight teams that made the finals this year and taking a look back on their season. Uh, first of all, we've got the reigning premiers, Collingwood. They last year made a prelim. They lost it by one point to the Sydney Swans. It was a pretty out-of-the-box season, first year under McRae. So therefore, their expectations going into this year would have been fairly lofty, I would have thought. I would have thought compete for a premiership, more or less make top four and genuinely be there in the final four at the end of finals. That would probably be the maybe the bare minimum or at least the pass mark for Collingwood this season. I'm doing this too much. But of course, the outcome that they got was that they were not only minor premiers at the end of the home and away season, they were premiers as well. So as far as uh, success goes, they've perfected this season. It couldn't have gone any better. You know, the, there's too many positives to count. You know, where do you start? Probably the defense, uh, second best in the league statistically, I think it was. You know, the first thing that comes to mind is probably the integration of players that uh, were new to the club this year. So you had Bobby Hill obviously win a Norm Smith medal in his first season. Oleg Markov was a player that I didn't mention in my trade video because I think he was the listed free agent or supplementary pick or whatever. Billy Frampton, Tom Mitchell, Daniel McStay, all these guys guys were pretty big pillars in the team that uh, obviously went on to win the flag. Some structural changes as well. Uh, Dugowie we saw play more in the midfield this year. He had an unbelievable season. Nick Dacos went from being a very, very good player to an elite player as well. And obviously probably would have won the Brownlow had he not been injured late in the year. Darcy Moore, again, a wonderfully important player for them. So we also saw, you know, the breakout of Josh Dacos this year. And, you know, there was so much growth from Collingwood in comparison to last year. And that was the difference in them obviously winning the Premiership. How do you find negatives for a team that won the flag? Well, uh, you probably shouldn't, but I'd say at times that, you know, towards the end of the year when their form dropped off, one of the biggest symptoms of that was their dysfunctional backline. You could probably attribute that to some of that being, you know, Dacos and Moore uh, were out of the side at that point. And, you know, as well, their, their form against the Lions has been a concern. They lost six in a row against them before the grand final, but at the end of the day, they won the premiership, so who cares? In terms of their off-season, it looks like being a relatively quiet one after a big one last year. Um, they may look to go for a mature ruck like Scott Lysett or something like that. A couple of fringe players may look to move out of the club for more opportunity, but on the whole, there's not a lot linked to coming out of Collingwood at this point, but things can change. Then we'll go with the Brisbane Lions, who of course uh, were runners-up this year. And the first thing we'll talk about is their preseason expectations. Well, they've been in the top four for or almost all of the last four seasons. And well, actually, the one that they didn't finish in the top four was last year. They finished sixth, and they still made it to the prelim anyway. So they've been fairly decent contenders going deep into finals each year without having made that final step of making the grand final. Of course, they did that this year and got within four points of winning the premiership. So overall, a really fantastic season for Brisbane, even though they didn't go all the way. They were dominant at home. They won 13 uh, games out of 13 this year, undefeated, 14 in a row at the Gabba in general. Uh, and then, you know, some individuals had great seasons. Lockie Neal won the Brownlow. Harris Andrews was an unbelievable key defender again this year. Charlie Cameron, best small forward in the competition, 59 goals, consistent in terms of defensive pressure as well. They also got 102 goals out of Danaher and Hipwood. So as a one-two punch, that's pretty, uh, pretty good going. We know they're one of the best scoring sides in the competition. We also saw them had to integrate Josh Dunkley this year into their midfield mix, as well as Will Ashcroft, who, even though he's talented, came in and played 
played a big role for him as well before his ACL. So again, it's going to be a year where the, the positives well and truly outweigh the negatives. Obviously, the biggest negative is that they didn't go all the way. They lost the grand final, which would be heartbreaking. They did let Bobby Hill tear him a new one, to, to be honest, in that grand final. But uh, these things do happen on grand final day. And obviously, I, th I still think they're still within the window. So the fact that they missed out this year, they have gained some experience from it. They're becoming a very finals experience list. You add some grand finals experience to that and uh, they're going to be good to go. So the off-season outlook, uh, I think the latest rumor is Tom Doday has nominated Brisbane at the time I record this. I've probably recorded this a fair bit before you've seen it. So I'm going to give Brisbane and Collingwood A plus for their uh, seasons this year. Let's talk about GWS, their first season under Adam Kingsley and what a season it was. Their preseason expectation, well, they finished in the bottom four last year. I think it was third last, in fact. And uh, you could just be forgiven for saying, you know, Adam Kingsley, get us, not necessarily in the finals, but around that mark, make us feel competitive again, like we can beat anyone on their day. And he sure, well and truly delivered on that. Uh, they won at something like nine venues this year. They won seven of the last nine games to make it all the way to a prelim final. One pointer for grand final. There's not too much more you could have asked for them. On top of that, you know, they won two finals with a relatively young list. There's an experienced core there at GWS, but there is also a lot of, you know, fringe young players uh, getting some experience for the first time in finals. They won a final at the MCG. They won a final at Adelaide Oval as well. So on top of that, they matched it with the best team in the competition in a prelim final at the MCG and nearly, nearly beat the eventual premiers at their home deck um, on the Friday night before the grand final. So unbelievable going from GWS. In terms of some individual I actually think that, well, their forward line in general was quite potent this year. We saw Toby Green kick 66. We saw Jesse Hogan kick 49 goals, which is one of his best career seasons. I think Brent Daniels also had a great season as a small forward. He kicked 26. Tom Green was one of the most prolific midfielders this year. We saw the emergence again, or re-emergence of a really attacking GWS side with, you know, precise kicking and runoff half back. They called the Orange Tsunami. On top of that, you know, Sam Taylor down back is a wonderful player. Kieran Briggs also emerges as a ruck. So the positives are over overwhelming for GWS. Um, in terms of negatives, you know, a slow start to the season. Did it cost them at the end of the year? Well, maybe not. But they were in the bottom four after round 12, I think, and they lost to West Coast. <laughs> I'm going to give GWS an A-plus as well for this season. I don't think you can ask too much more from a bottom three side the previous year. First year with a new coach, um, unbelievable going. Uh, in terms of their off-season, they're probably linked at the moment to Elliot Himmelberg. But again, it is early days. We'll go then with the next prelim finalist, the Carlton Footy Club, who uh, pre-season expectations, you would have said finals. Okay, They missed out narrowly last year. Heartbreaking final round loss to Collingwood. They just need to break the 10-year hoodoo and make it into finals. And of course, they did that. Not only that, they won two finals and they made it to a prelim. So that in itself, you know, the fact that they can mix it with some of the best teams in the competition, some of the, the teams they knocked off, they, they knocked off the power by 50 points when the power were going well. They beat the Pies, they beat the Ds twice. But the performance is in finals as well. I think Carlton really stood up to the plate uh, with, you know, not a lot, if any, finals experience on that list playing against the Demons, playing against the Swans. They won two of those finals. And of course, you know, Sam Walsh proves that he's built for finals. He won the, uh, the award, uh, is it the Gary Ayres Award for best player in the finals. Charlie Curno obviously probably had his career best season. He was unbelievable. Uh, they were a strong scores from stoppage team, the number one team. In fact, Paddy Cripps actually had seven clearances a game, which is pretty good going. He had an understated season, I would say, after a Brownlow year last year. Negatives for Carlton. Well, they lost six straight games between eight to 13, which saw them in the bottom four at uh, various points. Had they, you know, avoided that losing streak of, um, yeah, six in a row, you know, a top four berth would have been possible and you know, if that final against Brisbane's at home, for instance, if they'd done well enough to finish higher, well, it could have been a different story. They might have made the grand final. Again, a dysfunctional forward line, maybe. I know Charlie Curnow was unreal this year, but Harry Mackay won a Coleman medal two years ago. 45 last year, 58 the year before, and he kicked 29-29. So a little bit uh, inaccurate in front of goal, and I still think they've got to work out that mix, which leads on to their off-season focus probably a forward mid or a small forward. They're linked to Gresham, although I think he's more likely to go to Essendon. Um, and then there's also Elijah Hollands as well from the Gold Coast Sun. So an interesting off season for them to potentially top up. I will give Carlton though an A plus for this season. Then we'll go with the Melbourne Footy Club who were by comparison to the top four, a little bit more disappointing. Of course, they finished in the top four. The expectation would have been top two or top four genuinely compete for the flag. And I think they probably fell a little bit short of that bold expectation, but they did finish fourth and go out in straight sets. The positives, well, they made the top four again. Uh, they conceded the least points per game for any team this year. Um, Petrarca individually had a fantastic season as well. And you consider as well, they had some injuries this year. Bailey Fritch 
miss some football and um, and then obviously Clayton Oliver had that hamstring injury which uh, stretched on a little bit longer but to perform as well as they did with probably one of the biggest injury challenges I think they've seen since they became good I think the team functioned pretty well um, they had solid contributions as well from you know youngsters like Judd McVie you know Trent Rivers continued his development down back as did Jake Bowie but in terms of their negatives you know they, they've lost their last four finals since the 21 grand final they haven't really been proven to be clutch in those tight situations in particular the two finals this year they kicked 16 goals 28 I'd say the forward line dysfunction is their biggest Achilles heel. Um, when you look at the stats, Fridge kicked the most goals for them this year, and he only played 17 games. The next biggest was Cozzy, who's a small forward, and then their you know, real young key forward in JVR. Good for him. That's a great season, but you probably want more goals out of your top-end key forwards, which you know they obviously lack. Grundy recruitment didn't work, it has to be said, and I think they have just slightly under-delivered on the talent that they've got. They should be, they probably should have been playing in this year's grand final on talent. In terms of their off-season outlook, look, they're, they're still going to be well and truly in the mix for premierships, I would have imagined, but it, we'll wait and see what happens with this Clayton Oliver situation. That's going to be a big uh, story over the next coming weeks, I would have thought, and then might go for Harley Reid. They're going to bring in McAdam as well. So very, very big off-season potentially from a Melbourne point of view. There was another side to go out in straight sets this season. The other one was Port Adelaide, who, uh, you know, in terms of their preseason expectations, first and foremost, it was a disappointing year last year. And they finished 11th on the ladder, which means they probably would have had more modest goals for this year. Potentially not, if you ask their fans, maybe not, but... I would have said returning to finals and, you know, potentially a winning a final as well would have probably been the pass mark for Port Adelaide this year. Uh, ironically, they kind of did half of that. They put themselves in a really good position to, you know, win a final and compete well by finishing the top four. But of course, they would go out in straight sets. So kind of exceeded their expectations, but also kind of not really. Let's look at the positives first, though. Um, they jumped from 11th to 3rd. That's the most obvious. Uh, so they had a really big improvement this year. They went on a 13-game winning streak and at that point looked like up there with Collingwood as the best team in the competition before letting themselves down a little bit with a four-game losing streak as well. Butters and Rosie have fully ascended to being absolutely elite midfielders in the competition that is a great plus for them i thought the integration of horn francis this year was pretty successful too they've also had a couple of clutch wins both away from home this year that come to mind uh sydney in sydney in round four when their season looked a little bit jittery even at that early stage of the season and then later in the year against essendon where dan houston kicked that absolute long bomb after the siren so speaking of dan houston another big positive all australian defender this year and uh finn Layson as well probably shouldn't be their mainstay you know leading goal kicker but he kicked 38 this year which i think is a, is a bit of a tick for him. Negatives, well, we talked about the four-game losing streak. Uh, that cost them a top-two spot. Another couple of poor finals performances this year. You know, 49 points against the Lions. Probably should have gotten closer to that on talent. And then, you know, losing at home to the Giants as well. Uh, they really didn't fire in that game. Their midfield didn't really fire in this final series, but they are young, I suppose. Uh, a couple of senior players kind of fell by the wayside this year. Scotty Lysette. Ollie Wines didn't have a great year. Trent McKenzie to a lesser extent. Charlie Dixon also doesn't quite look like the same player. So there's a little bit of a transition we're seeing there at Port Adelaide. They also lost both showdowns. Big, big negative. What's their off-season outlook? Well, they look like they're going to be loading up for another, uh, you know, crack at the flag next year. They're looking at four mature talls. Asava, uh, Zerk Thatcher, Sweet, and Soldo. They might look to move on a couple of veterans. Lysett in particular, to a lesser extent, Wines is also possible, but we'll see. So if I had to rate the, the two teams that went out in straight sets this year, I've given Melbourne a C- because their expectations should have been a little bit higher to go out in straight sets. Not great. And if we're talking about Port Adelaide, I'd probably elevate it to a B. Maybe that's a little bit of a double standard, but I think they uh, probably had less expectation on them in comparison to Melbourne, if that makes sense. Then we'll talk about the Sydney Swans, who uh, obviously went out in week one of this week's uh, this year's final series, sorry. And then, uh, you know, the previous year were runners-up in a grand final. Admittedly got absolutely annihilated in that grand final, but what were their expectations this year? Well, you'd say probably compete for a flag, um, and then you probably have to temper those expectations with the acknowledgement that they had a backline completely decimated with injuries, and talls in general were hard to come by for the Swans this year. But, you know, on the positive side, their back end of the year saw them get back into the eights, and despite injuries, they were competitive. Played pretty well in the finals too. Got beaten by a better side on the day in Carlton, but showed they weren't that far off the pace, and at times... They did look pretty awful this year. Errol Goulden was one of the biggest positives as a third-year player. I think he's a third-year player. Came fourth in the Brownlow. Outstanding effort for him. All-Australian player as well. Scored 205 in a game. I can't remember who it was against, but they did. And uh, other than that, they were one of the best pressure sides this year. Ranked second in pressure acts. And it was prevalent again towards the back end of the year. And then obviously in the finals as well against Carlton. Ugh. 
Biggest negatives, well, they failed to really compete for a premiership in a year where they were expected to, but again, the injuries to the back line really kind of robbed them of that opportunity, so I'll give them a little bit of a mulligan for that one. Paddy McCartan's probably one of the biggest negatives out of this year. He, along with Franklin, have retired, but the, the reasons around McCartan's retirement are also pretty tragic. Uh, in terms of you know scoring power as well, we saw Tom Papley kick 37 goals this year, but other than him, the avenues to goal look a little bit shaky. They're relying a lot on medium to small types. Heaney and Papley contributed for, I think they were first and third in the goal kicking. We do have Logan McDonald in there, and Marty was solid this year at times. And I do think, you know, the transition from Buddy Franklin, they'll be fine. I do really rate Logan McDonald, but in the context of this year, they probably didn't find enough goals from their forwards. Off-season outlook, well, again, they'll probably be loading up for a premiership or at least, you know, stabilizing to some extent. Uh, they've been highlighted for ruck and key defensive position concerns, obviously. Grundy's probably going to come in. Will they get a Tom Cleary or something like that? They've also been linked to Jordan and Harms as a bit of midfield depth. So probably consolidating a little bit, de bit of depth around the ground. For Sydney, I'll give them a C-. It wasn't a completely horrendous season because they do have the injury excuse. But at the end of the day, they also can't say it was a massively successful season considering they made the grand final the previous year. Year. And finally, we've got the Saints, uh, whose expectations this year probably compete for finals. This is the first year under Ross Lyon, of course. A little bit of an unknown, a little bit of a stagnant list. But I'd say, um, you know, their expectations should have been around the mark for finals again and potentially move towards this new game plan under Ross Lyon. Well, I'd say they've probably exceeded those expectations. They, they finished uh, in the sixth spot, so they actually won a home final. Yes, they lost it, but I think the overall growth of St Kilda this year is overwhelmingly positive. Sure, it started well and fell away, but something to build off. So the positives are they returned to finals in their first season under Ross Lyon. Uh, in particular, that was built on a team with the hallmark of being really, really defensive. They're, they had the best defense by uh, points per game, so 716 points a game is all they can uh, conceded on average this year. Obviously, that's down to system as well, but uh, largely thanks to two All-Australian defenders in that team, Jack Sinclair and Callum Wilkie as well had outstanding seasons. We also saw career best seasons for their smalls in uh, Jack Higgins and Dan Butler. When I say career best seasons, I mean the most goals they've ever kicked. Higgins kicked 36 and Butler kicked 33. But on the negative side, they were ranked 15th in the league for scoring, so there are still forward line issues, but you also uh, re recall that they did have a lot of injury issues this year, particularly with their tolls. Max King missed like half a season. I think uh, Membry as well missed a chunk of footy. So it was a bit of a makeshift forward. So they were also ranked last this year for inside 50 efficiency. So that's the rate of inside 50s, which end up in a shot at goal. Again, you can probably use that excuse a little bit of a very new look forward line this year. And uh, hopefully with better injury luck next year, maybe a few reinforcements through the off season, we might see an improvement in that area. And I guess you have to include a negative there, final performance against the Giants. The Giants are a damn good team, so I think it's more positive than negative, but at the end of the day, they lost the only final, and it was a home final. Off-season outlook, well, they've been linked to reinforcing their midfield. Uh, Dylan Shield, Liam Henry, and potentially Paddy Dow as well have all been linked to trades with the club. I think they'll also continue to refresh the list and getting some access to draft picks. They've been doing a pretty good job of that in recent times. Probably going to see the back of Gresham and potentially Billings as well, but primarily probably reinforce the midfield and also remain a strong presence in the this year's draft. So overall, based on all that, I'm going to give St Kilda a B because I actually think they did exceed their expectations and therefore this season was quite positive for them by contrast to Sydney who already had higher expectations. Anyway guys, that's going to wrap up the video. I'm going to have to cut this video pretty short. I am in excruciating pain, but as always, I look forward to your feedback. Let me know in the comment section anything you agree with or disagree with and uh, of course, anything that I missed out. So thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video.